everyone is obsessed with blood sugar and insulin resistance causing all of their problems. But do you actually understand what insulin resistance is? Welcome to Noob Novice Nerd, where I explain topics on three levels of understanding. And today I'll be explaining insulin resistance. Noob level. In your body, the main form of fuel for your cells is sugar, which is scientifically known as glucose. Now insulin and the insulin receptor act as a lock and key system to allow sugar into your cells to be used as energy. Insulin is a hormone which acts as the key which unlocks the insulin receptor, the lock, and once unlocked, the insulin receptor tells your cells to open up channel molecules on the cell membrane, which allows sugar to flow into and fuel your cells. Now, unfortunately, due to genetics and living an unhealthy lifestyle, the insulin receptor lock can become rusty and damaged, which causes the insulin key to no longer function to allow sugar into the cell. Overall, the resistance of insulin receptors as the lock to insulin as the key is the basic mechanism that drives insulin resistance. Novice level. In your body, you must maintain balance to function and stay alive. This balancing act is known as homeostasis, from regulating the amount of water in your cells to the amount of energy or sugar in your blood. Too much or too little of anything and your cells can and will die. Now to maintain homeostatic blood sugar levels to ensure that your cells aren't starved or overfed, you have two hormones, insulin and glucagon. Insulin decreases blood sugar by telling your cells to feed by binding to insulin receptors on cells, which open glucose channels, allowing glucose to enter and fuel the cell. Conversely, glucagon increases blood sugar by binding to glucagon receptors on the liver, and this initiates the production of glucose, which is shuttled into the bloodstream. Now due to genetics and lifestyle choices, chronic inflammation, advanced glycation end products, reactive oxygen species, and excess fat or cholesterol can build up, causing insulin receptors to malfunction. And when these receptors malfunction, they may stop responding to insulin in the way they should, becoming insulin resistant. And without proper sensitivity to insulin, your cells become inefficient at utilizing their main source of energy, glucose, from the bloodstream, and they struggle to function properly, let alone efficiently. To conclude the novice understanding, the buildup of excess fat and damaging waste in the body causes insulin receptors to become insulin resistant. Resistant. And finally, nerd level. In healthy physiological states, insulin binding results in autophosphorylation of the insulin receptor, initiating downstream cell signaling that elicits either a mitogenic or metabolic response, depending on the concentration of insulin in the bloodstream. When insulin concentrations are high, SHC is recruited to the phosphorylated insulin receptor and triggers a mitogenic response by the MAPK ERK pathway, leading to growth and mitosis. Conversely, when insulin concentrations are low, insulin receptor substrate molecules, IRS molecules, are phosphorylated by the insulin receptor. Next, IRS1 recruits and binds to the P85 subunit of the PI3 kinase, and this activates the P110 catalytic subunit of the PI3 kinase, which acts on a molecule attached to the cell membrane called PIP2 and converts it to PIP3. Next, PIP3 recruits PDK1, which indirectly activates mTOR, and together mTOR and PDK1 activate the AKT or PKB molecule. From here, things start getting exciting. The PKB AKT interacts with a protein called AS160, the essential Rad gap involved in the distribution of GLUT4 to the cell membrane. Once the the GLUT4 storage vesicle is transported and integrated into the cell membrane. Glucose is shuttled into the cell via GLUT4, the glucose channel. Now, unfortunately, due to genetics and lifestyle, the accumulation of DNA methylation, intramyocellular lipids, and receptors like RAGE being activated may occur, which interferes with the metabolic signaling cascade and prevents GLUT4 channels from being transported to the cell membrane. Overall, with broken metabolic signaling, GLUT4 is not transported to the cell membrane and insulin resistance occurs. And on that note, I hope you now understand insulin resistance a little bit better than before. If you enjoyed the video or learned something new, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment down below another topic you'd like me to explain on the new novice and nerd level of understanding.